another no more future and hopefully you're doing all right all good and don't forget to hit that subscribe button like comment down below about the video whatever you want and let's get back to the game shall we yep intrigue is a word i think i read this i think i i read this if i haven't i'm sorry that's one dial or monologue done yeah i've never been to one before much less one that fits inside the city like this Plus, a friend of mine co promised to visit it together with me sometime soon, so I can't help but be a little excited. I see. Always seeing, alright. He's like, oh, this guy. This guy got a soul within him. Not one for amusement parks, I take it. Never been to one. Never really seemed like something I'd be keen on visiting. If I want to simulate the feeling of going up and down repeatedly with no apparent rhyme or reason, the elevator at the HQ already does that excellent, excellently well. Man, Jasper is a little bit... I don't know. I get it. CEO, big company. Gloomy. In general, it just always felt like a waste of time. Why, hello again, Mr. Killjoy. Been a while since I last heard from you. All jokes aside, you can't help but wonder just how much further away your destination is from here. You've been traveling for quite a long while amidst this traffic and you imagine that Jasper must have built up quite the appetite by now. And yet, if there is an end to this voyage, it's clearly nowhere in sight. As you're reading your very thoughts, Jasper finally makes as if to move closer to the door, an exhausted look on his face. I've had enough of all this mess. We're getting out now. Hippolyta! You have to assume that the Drake is referring to the car or the AI driving it at least considering that the vehicle makes quite a sudden turn as that name is uttered. It breaks off from the large crowd of vehicles heading further into the city and begins to drive down a much less frequented side road with ample space for driving but no place to park in the slightest. It doesn't prevent the car from stopping momentarily by the side of the road however giving the two of you ample room to descend at your leisure. As you do so, the drake turns to address you. You didn't leave anything inside, did you? Please don't start asking me this question too. The drake raises an eyebrow at your seemingly nonsensical fears, but it doesn't take long for him to sweep them under the figurative carpet. If you so wish. With a curt nod in the direction of his vehicle, the car suddenly speeds up and continues to its trek down the lane, disappearing just beyond the corner. I suppose we don't really need to keep it parked anywhere nearby while we enjoy our meal, after all. Our meal? What's this about you eating all of a sudden? Don't tell me that your mad scientist friend made you capable of hunger as well. Well, I'm not sure if hunger is the right word for it, but I can eat food just like you can. And unless you have any reasons why I shouldn't, I think I will. Oh bloody, fine. But I'm sending your end of the bill straight to Dr. Shelley. I won't spare a single cent of whatever you end up eating. Well, so much for trying out the most expensive dishes at the place you were visiting. Not like you were rooting for that or anything, that misconception was all Jasper's doing. How long is he gonna keep pretending as though you're some kind of... Well? You hear Jasper's voice beckoning you from further down the road. It seems he started walking away from you in the midst of your inopportune pondering. Are you going to move already or are you nailed to the floor? I'm coming. Calm down YouTube, that's uh that's not that word, okay? I've no I've been noticed that some of my videos get like the de de demonetized. Even this one. No more future, I'm like, dang. What what did I say? Either that or the AI misheard me. Could be something like that. Could be anything really. Or I'm not saying that word, could be misinterpreted. You catch up to the green reptile following right beside him. Well, beside him and a little, a little further back. Wouldn't want to hurt his fragile ego or anything. Plus, he is the only one between you two who even knows where you're supposed to go. Might as well ask more about that since you have time. So, what kind of restaurants are in this area? Just about anything, really. Traditional, fusion, experimental, and with as many different cuisines as there are buildings in this neighborhood. Of course, the exact specifics change from month to month, but with this area being a hot spot for wealthy tourists and residents alike, it fosters quite the competitive environment. I'd say about half of all restaurants here close down and reopen under new managements every full moon. 
That many? Sounds harsh. It is what it is. Hey, they couldn't handle the challenge. They should have never tried opening a restaurant here of all places to begin with. I like ambitious businessmen, not conceited ones. I see. What does that even have to do with your question all of a sudden? Well, it's, it's, uh, some, it's throwing out uh, a personality, you know, for, for Isaac here to get something by. Take a conversation starter. Oh, what do you mean by that? What about the other half? As you should probably have inferred by now, they're alive and thriving and have been for quite a long time. Not only do they offer breathtaking menus, they can also flaunt a stored history in the city, a history earned through blood, sweat, tears, and copious amounts of sacrifice. I won't have it any other way. So he says, whatever that means. Which kind are we going to today, if I may ask? What do you think? You're going to the fancy and snobby type. You can already tell. In all honesty, you're probably not going to mind your surroundings no matter what kind of restaurant the Drake brings you to. Probably just his way of speaking that's bothering you. That and the numerous people both out in the streets and within their cars staring at you everywhere you go. It's a familiar sight by now but made all the more annoying and unsettling by the presence of Jasper next to you. You must be used to being followed by people's sorry. You must be used to being followed by people's gazes while out and about, as he hasn't commented on that or anything similar so far. However, that could change at any point. You decide to try and get him to think of something else before he notices a new reason to be annoyed with you. You know, I'm surprised you haven't been accosted by a journalist so far. Unfortunately, you can't think of anything better than that. Unsurprisingly, the dragon is quite surprised to hear you ask about that all of a sudden. We've barely moved 20 feet from where we dropped off. Oh, really? Damn, that's crazy. Still, I'd be surprised if we don't meet one or two sooner or later, given how famous you are. I'm famous? Oh, crap. What have I gotten myself into? Aren't you supposed to be a famous one here? He knows. There are no words to accurately describe how cringy this, ha this whole ordeal has been. Even the Drake can't help but shake his head at the mumbling mess we've turned into. We're probably not going to run into any journalists right now. The place I booked that table at is not even a minute away from here after all. We'll be left alone while we're at the establishment. However, once we're outside again, then all hell's going to break loose, you reckon. You already can't handle the gazes of, a, of mere passerbys when next to the Drake you can scarcely imagine what'll happen when you add storms of people asking questions and demanding answers to the mix. Looks like I'm not the only one who dreads an encounter with those people. Jasper's remarks comes off as quite a sudden surprise. Weren't you interviewed by a couple of them just the other day alongside Mary? I was. That doesn't mean I enjoyed it. We needed to put out a public statement after your most recent stunt and those fame chasers would have never said no. I did what I had to. It's about time you learn what you have to do as well. After that, the Drake goes quietly like they prefer to save any further discussion for the dinner table. All you can do is wonder what he meant with those cryptic words as you follow him along. Before you even know it, you're riding the main elevator of one of the largest skyscrapers in town, home apparent of several eateries and other high-end establishments. When the doors finally open, you're greeted by one of the fanciest dining, dining rooms you've ever seen, with elegant tables draped in red cloth and glistening golden shards hanging by the ceiling through what appears to be magnetic force alone. You're pretty sure you saw the name of this place over at the entrance, but you already forgot it so long and confusing it was. What is even more confusing, however, is how come you're the only people here? Though the tables are quite numerous, you can't find a single soul sitting down on any of these chairs. It's actually quite an unsettling sight compared to the bustling streets down on the ground. Before you can inquire Jasper about this strange situation, you hear the steady steps of an approaching waiter, also dressed in bright reds and shimmering yellows. Good afternoon, gentlemen. On behalf of all our staff, we welcome you to our humble establishment. The mid-aged skunk appears quietly but politely and tries his best to be as accommodating as he can. His gaze is transfixed into the large reptile beside you, but a few uncertain looks in your direction are proof enough that he acknowledges your strange and possibly frightening existence. Thank you, it's been quite a while since I've been to this place. I'm looking forward to my second time dining here. And we look forward to delighting you once again, dear guests. Now allow me to show you to your table. 
The skunk escorts you to the table nearest the glass window, which definitely seems to be the most scenic spot in the restaurant. Other than that, however, the table looks just the same as all the others nearby, small and orderly. You make as if to pull your own chair out of from underneath the table, but the waiter quickly does that for you as soon as he realizes you were going to, with the most forced gallantry you've ever witnessed. Judging from the mildly annoyed look on Jasper's face, you were clearly supposed to expect that. Oh god, it's one of those places. Fancy. You sit down and wait patiently as an endless pro procession of waiters brings forth the missing silverware and questionable dining utensils. It takes longer than any of you would have liked thanks to the waiter's apprehension of you slowing them down. Afterwards, the skunk lingers a little longer to enunciate every article in the restaurant's menu in great detail to you both, with no regard to whatsoever to your inability to follow along the conga line of impossible dish names. The one thing you've managed to understand is that there's no opting out of any of the food choices. In other words, your meal has already been decided for you. This is not particularly reassuring. By the way, sir, is the gentleman with you ordering a menu as well? The waiter turns to face Jasper, evidently not interested in asking you directly, prompting the latter to turn towards you. Well, are you? Good question. You're not quite sure yourself. He did say earlier that he'd make you pay for the food you were going to order, rather make Mary pay for it. You're not sure how much it matters either way. And of course, Pandora, gotta remember Isaac has in they said it themselves. It has endless money. Not endless not endless patience. Like they could literally keep spending uh, they've been spending years and years in development lots of money. And not even a dent. On one hand, you're not particularly excited with your, not even a dent in their like profit margins uh, yearly or annually. On one hand, you're not particularly excited with your prospected meal, if you can even call it that. But on the other, you are feeling quite hungry. And besides, you're doing this to prove a point to Jasper either way. I am. The skunk appears a little confused by your choice, but the CEO doesn't appear nearly as troubled as you thought it'd be. He merely resigns himself to your decision as he politely shoes the waiter away back to his quiet corner on the other side of the room. After what felt like an eternity, the two of you are finally all alone again. So, you've never been to a place like this before, I imagine. You must have finally noticed how out of your element you really are. Believe it or not, I'm not a stranger to this kind of restaurant. I've been to some place similar before. Before I became a synthetic, I mean. The last specification caused the man's eyebrows to furrow a little, but he tries his best not to let that get to him as he continues. Is that so? From what I heard about your past before joining the project, you were but a normal college student. It didn't seem like the sort of background that would allow you to visit places like these on the regular. And I didn't. One time was more than enough. I didn't even go there willingly. It was all my uncle's idea. You briefly paused, unsure whether you are supposed to share more details on what happened. However, the somewhat curious demeanor of the Drake and his uncharacteristic silence are enough to convince you to continue. I think I was about 13 when we went there. Me and my cousin and our parents were coming back from our holidays on the beach. We had decided beforehand to drive all the way home without stopping to eat so as to save time, compensate, we ate more for breakfast. Right. So we were driving the highway and it was about lunchtime. And my aunt, to the annoyance of both me and my cousin, boldly declared that she was hungry. My parents tried to convince her to wait until we got home a few hours later, but she wouldn't budge. She needed something to eat now. And my uncle, who was driving, regrettably, regrettably obliged. Unfortunately, there wasn't any Leroy Luffins on the interstate in that track. The only restaurant our GPS showed anywhere near us was a fancy-looking locale a few miles north called the Golden Canary. The Golden Canary. I seem to recall hearing that name before. It's a traditional French bistro on I-138, correct? Four stars? That would be it, yeah. Short chuckle escapes from the dragon's lips upon realizing where this is going. Your family must have been mad. That's one of the priciest restaurants this side of the country, and not even one of the best quality-wise either. Yeah, I tried telling that to my family. I know I tried. When we got to the gates, dressed like people who just came back from the beach, I literally warned them. You know you're in the wrong place when the waiters at their entrance dress better than you do. Jasper cannot resist laughing just a little bit louder at your comment, evidently quite content with your self-awareness. Not that you can blame him, the hilarity and wit of your joke ring true even now, when your yellow sweater and cheap pair of trousers can hardly compare with the Drake's formal apparel or the rigid, or the rigid uniforms of the waiters. 
As for you, you take a... <laughs> oh my god, I just noticed that. As for you, you take a quick look around your table, making sure no stray butler heard your possibly offensive musings. The only one you can find, however, rests on the other side of the restaurant, looking in your direction absent-mindedly, holding a small half-empty bottle of water with which you refill your glasses as soon as you try to drink from them. You already know from your previous experience that those things cost $20 a piece at least. The choice between a dry throat and a dry bank account is as clear now as it was back then. Anyway, long story short, we had a terrible time and ended up with a $1,000 bill for 6 people. Hmm, that's rather strange. For some reason, I expected it to be higher. That's because we only ordered the cheapest things on the menu and didn't drink any water whatsoever. Didn't eat anything either for that matter. How was my 8 year old cousin supposed to eat plankton air and cocoa beans? Poor kid has had nightmares about that outing ever since. You're pretty sure his parents still have to drag him out by the ears every time they want to go someplace. Noticing the unusual smile on Jasper's lips, you try to bring the conversation back to him. I assume you've never experienced anything similar? Not remotely. On the rare occasions, I eat with guests and they bring children along. They're usually already accustomed to the high cuisine dishes of the restaurants we go to. Alright, upon ending his sentence, the drink finally wipes that grin off his face. It appears as though he only just now realized he was smiling to begin with. I hope you don't take my reactions to your tailor personally. Simply don't happen to hear stories about lower class people as often as I do my own. So you think I'm from a lower class than you are? As I said, don't take it personally. It's merely an objective assessment. Do you really need to inquire how much your family made before you sold yourself to science to have a good picture of how big the gap between our earnings is? No. No, he doesn't, man. <laughs> no, man. No. This guy, Elon Musk. A little bit different. Furry Elon Musk. Elon Huss. Or Elon Tuss? I don't know. No, 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 he doesn't. But the fact that he's drawing attention to this point still makes you mad regardless. Well, I hope you're enjoying all that extra money you have then. The dragon is stunned by your passive-aggressive comment for a few seconds. He appears desperate to look offended by your words that cannot seem to come up with any sort of comeback. So he's like, damn it, I am enjoying it. Instead, he retreats a little further within himself, shifting his gaze to the world outside so as to avoid your own. With nothing more to say, you try to slow yourself down and begin thinking about your time with the CEO so far. You're probably taking his words a little too personally, if you had to guess. He's already trying as hard as he can to understand you in spite of his ideological, ideological limitations. So to say, the least you could do is try and be kinder to him in return. Then again, this whole thing started because he brought you to this fancy place to begin with, a choice that wasn't made with the best of intentions either. And all that began as a result of that nonsensical meeting with the owners that you still can't wrap, wrap your head around and... The truth is, the more you try to make sense of any of this, the less you understand. Figuring out what you're supposed to be doing or thinking at a time like this feels like studying for an exam only 30 minutes before it begins. Not wanting to break into hysterics before your rep reptilian companion, you try to distract yourself by staring out the window as well, similar to what he's doing. The people busting about in the streets down below look so tiny from up here. You're not sure exactly how high up you are, but you'd be surprised if it were anything below 100 feet. The city itself looks wonderful, thanks to all its lovely colors and exotic shapes. If you're like in a modern art museum, gazing into new artwork every time you tilt your gaze ever so slightly. Too bad the horizon isn't featured in this unique collection, and even the pink sky above has to fight for space amidst this urban jungle. The sight is almost melancholic, in a way. Though you cannot say how or why that is. Apologies for the wait, good guess. You and, your, you and Jasper both are brought back to Earth by the sudden arrival of the same waiter from murder, accompanied by two valets holding some scarcely furnished plates. For first, pause de va, we have hair of we have air of plankton and cocoa beans and a bed of river trout and potato scales. Have a good meal. It is only after the skunk and his fellow waiters have left that you allow yourself to chuckle at the plate before you, earning a soft giggle even from the man before you. Ironic. Ironic indeed. I hope that doesn't mean they heard me. I assure you they didn't. Had your tone of voice ever gotten that high, I would have silenced you myself. Well, that's reassuring and a little frightening. You take a brief look into your plate if you can even call it that. You're not sure if you can even see the trout hidden underneath what looks like sea foam, but the meal is a meal, you suppose, especially if Jasper's paying for it. When you finally get to it, the taste is about as ethereal as you originally expected. It tastes like nothing. So you claim. I'm actually rather enjoying myself. 
He's certainly not displeased, that's for sure. But for that matter, neither are you, considering there was barely anything in there to be displeased by. Having said that, I'm surprised you can even taste anything at all. Of all the things Dr. Shelley could have developed before, a means of establishing your humanity or lack thereof, a sense of taste must have been at the bottom of the list. And yet, I have one. I can also feel pain for that matter, as well as go to sleep when I'm feeling drained. That sounds entirely... Unnecessary? Yeah, I guess you're right about that. But imagine how you'd feel if you were suddenly deprived of all these things at once. I'm pretty sure anyone who finds themselves in such a situation would be quick to go insane. The Drake is as intrigued by your arguments as he is repelled by it. In an effort to not lose his mind, he decides to change the subject onto something else that you just said. You say so, and yet I doubt you'll find anyone in the world who lives every day in pain and agony who wouldn't get rid of that sensation in a heartbeat, given the opportunity. If you can choose whether to feel pain or not, I assume you do, and you still choose to suffer, then you are a fool. You can't say you don't see the truth in the dragon's words, as rude as they are. It's definitely a fair perspective on this matter, if nothing else. But you have your own perspective you wish to share. Do you have any idea of how it feels to lose everything, all at once? To go to sleep not knowing if you'll ever get to wake up again? Your choice of topic has successfully unnerved the unpleasant Drake, though whether that was your intended goal or not is debatable. Nonetheless, with all these dark thoughts swarming your mind at present beckoned by your dreadful memories, the only thing you can do is voice them out loud before they overtake you from within. I know what it's like to feel nothing now, and that has taught me how important it is to feel anything. Hunger, fatigue, pain. Sure, they're inconvenient. They've always been inconvenient, but that doesn't make them any less important. Maybe you're right, and I might be better off without them. But I think I'd rather keep them for now, if only so I can remember what it's like to live and breathe. You ought to thank Apollo for helping you come to terms with your feelings on the matter. If it wasn't for that discussion you had with him and his sister a few days back, you don't know what you'd be thinking right now. Again, the dragon's gaze veers off into the unknown. His expression a mixture of uncertainty, fear, and anger. The only thing you can gather is that he's been listening intently to everything you said. Not quite the conversation you were looking forward to, I assume. Indeed. Frankly speaking, this sort of sentimental talk is outside the scope of our meeting here. We didn't come to this place to discuss trivial things just as, such as these, nor are we here to waste time and idle about. We're here to absolve a purpose as you well remember yourself. As calm and serious as Jasper purports himself to be, you can notice a distinct feeling of discomfort hidden behind his austere or austere facade of hurt even but there is no point inquiring about it at this point we reckon and probably just deny it and start yelling at you again i understand good so let us return to what we should really be discussing shall we you're referring to our talk for murder in the car right about your company and stuff indeed we never quite finished that conversation did we I'm pretty sure we didn't, no. I think the last thing we spoke about was whether Pandora classified as a family business or not. You know, on account of your family being pretty much responsible for its existence in the f existing in the first place and stuff, the Drake raises an eyebrow at your observation, though to what end you cannot say. Well, I certainly wouldn't call it that myself if I could avoid it. But it is true that my family has been in charge of Pandora's management and upkeep across the ages. Now it's your turn to squint at Jasper's affirmation. Across the ages? How old is Pandora again? Well, it's a little difficult to pinpoint exactly due to its murky origins. But the nucleus of what would later become Pandora was laid out as early as the late 18th century. Damn! They're old. This is like 2050, right? Or something? I can't remember. This is the future. That's old. Like 200 plus years. The 18... What? That's almost 300 years ago. Oh, there we go. That's quite a storied history for an R&D firm. Again, Jasper gives you a weird sort of look as though he generally cannot tell whether you're jesting or not. I'm referring to Pandora Incorporated, not the labs. Those have only been around for about half as long, give or take. Oh, that's right. I keep forgetting that they're two separate entities. That's quite difficult to believe. You mean to tell me you truly cannot distinguish between the two? They are quite different after all. I... I think so? From what I gathered earlier the meeting, all Pandora Inc. does is provide the funding for the labs to function, correct? The Drake almost face palms at your assertion. That woman truly told you nothing, did she? You raise an eyebrow, it is common, though thankfully a deeper explanation is not too far behind. 
The labs belong to Pandora Holding, yes, but claiming that all Pandora does is provide funding to other businesses is hardly a comprehensive answer. What does that even mean? Exactly. Elaborate, my man. When the conversation becomes so technical in nature, you're honestly starting to feel a little left out. So what does Pandora Inc. actually do again? Everything. The answer is so quick and sudden, it almost takes you aback. You mean that it's involved in a lot of different markets, or... The Drake needs quite some time to sort through his thoughts, and you can't say that makes you any less disconcerted. Even that isn't a complete answer. And what is a complete answer exactly? That Pandora has stakes in numerous businesses and holdings across the entire economic spectrum. And how is that any different from what I just said? Jas <laughs> Jasper gives you a foul look, unamused at your rude interruption. These businesses and holdings also have stakes in numerous other businesses and holdings, and so do these latter groups and so on and so forth. Do you understand where I'm going with this? So Pandora is a tree with its roots deep and its branches far and wide. And it's as tall as high as the sky, I guess. Not really. Then I'm late in terms even you can understand. Through its numerous holdings and businesses venture, business ventures, Pandora Inc. owns everything. Every business in every sector in every market in every country, well almost everything, but the point still stands. You mean even this restaurant? You give a brief look at your surroundings once again who all of a sudden shine in a completely different light than they did earlier. Of course, and rest assured the waiters here know this very well, whether they're fully aware of it or not. Why else do you suppose they had so little trouble vacating the entire restaurant for our arrival? It was done solely to accommodate you, after all, and you coming along was decided the last minute. That makes a staggering amount of sense, actually. You were wondering how come the entire restaurant was empty save for the two of you. So it's like a date. Regardless, it doesn't make what you're hearing any less unreal. Restaurants and eateries are but a small part of our ventures, and yet we control nearly all of them nonetheless. Even further beyond those, if you can name a company or an enterprise, it's more likely than not that we are behind it. This is pretty much what every big company does nowadays. Acquis acquisitions. I was acquisitions. They either buy the whole company, acquire it, acquire it, right? Or have some kind of. Uh, they technically own it. They don't own own the whole thing, but they have uh, major shares in it. Let's say twenty percent, forty. So either way, they got their hands in it. You know what I'm saying? So you're like a monopoly. The dragon scoffs at your comment as though you're still yet to grasp what he's trying to tell you. A monopoly is a business that controls the entirety of a specific market, Android. And like I said, that's not an app descriptor for what we are. Pandora is in a business. It's not even a market. It's the entire world economy. Just as Jasper fin finishes his sentence, the waiter brings the next appetizer. Poached clams. Something something. You honestly didn't listen. You haven't even designed your danger plate a glance. All you can do is stare flabbergasted at the drink before you eating his meal intently as though he didn't just say the craziest thing you've heard possibly in your entire life. I can see why the FBI is having a hard time. The government themselves can't really do anything against Pandora. They can only like stop small projects of Pandora, but shutting it all down is shutting the whole market down. You know what I'm saying? You're pulling my leg, right? I mean, there's no way we're having this conversation now of all times in the middle of a restaurant where other people might hear us. And yet, we are having this conversation right here in the middle of this locale where other people might hear us. What few people are around anyway. You briefly glanced at the nearby tables prompted by the CEO even now they're still empty. When you first saw them upon entering the locale, you merely found it shocking. Now it's more so unsettling. And you're fine telling me all this in spite of that? Aren't you afraid of those waiters learning all about how you're the world economy or whatever? Last you heard deep conspiracies. Last you heard deep conspiracies like that only thrive because nobody's aware of them even existing, or at least that's what you assume. You honestly haven't watched nearly enough movies to have an opinion on this kind of stuff. Not really, no. Whether people are aware of what I'm telling you or not is entirely irrelevant. You being aware of it, on the other hand, is of the utmost importance at present. Uh, me? What does me being aware of all this have anything to do with why we're here? I thought you were supposed to ask me questions and stuff to get a better idea about whether I'm human or not, like the owner's ass. The dragon covers his face as he shakes his head. Evidently disappointed, disappointed, mouthing foul words under his breath you can only catch a hint of. And Bray, tell how am I supposed to gain insight into your situation when you're clearly unaware of it in the first place? You're instantly taken aback by Jasper's sudden retort so cold and to the point it is. If there's someone who needs to learn here, it's none other than you, my friend. 
You didn't know the law surrounding synthetics when I first met you. You didn't know of the FBI's meddling the project until they showed up in your apartment. And just now I found out that you didn't even know the full scope of the company that created you in the first place. Can't bring yourself to reply to a single one of those accusations. You more than anyone else know that you're guilty as charged. Honestly, you should feel happy that I'm taking time out of my day to educate you on this matter. Honestly, you should feel happy that I'm taking my uh, uh, taking my time out of my day to educate you on this matter. Assume you can even feel happy in the first place. After all, has like Dr. Shetty ever told you about any of this before, did she? No, no, she didn't. Well, if anything, her not saying anything just makes all this even more implausible. I mean, there's no way you guys got this big and did all this with nobody noticing. Oh, don't make me laugh. Do you really think this is all some sort of big conspiracy? As I stated earlier, Pandora acquired its leading positions in the world economy through perfectly legal fusions and acquisitions. Ah, oh, correct. All done in broad daylight, no less. I assure you, people had every opportunity to take notice of what was happening. I'll be honest, Isaac, not everyone can know what who's who, who's the biggest company, how big they are, you know. Especially if it's not in your field, it's not where you're headed, it's not your path. It's like if you're living in the middle of nowhere and then somebody comes in with a with an iPhone, you'd be like, What's that? Right? If you wouldn't know, you wouldn't care. Oh, you're the CEO thingy? What is that? Can I tell whether the Drake's voice is in any particular intonation so lost you're trying to wrap your head around everything he's saying? And you're saying nobody ever realized that Pandora owned every single business they ever bought, they ever bought goods or services from? Did you? No, but... Correct. And the same is true for most people out there if I had to guess. After all, who has the time or even the desire to investigate things such as these? To sift through the records, the documents, the data of every single company in existence until they inevitably stumble onto us at every turn. Very few people indeed, and even if there are any such people in the world, you'd be hard pressed to find any among them who actually care. I would what? Are you insane? Why would anybody not, anybody not care about finding out that a single company like Pandora owns every facet of their li you know, lives? Sorry. I'm a little bit tired, everybody. It's actually rather startling how quickly you began accepting everything that comes out of Jasper's lips as fact. Though if you, ha if you had to guess, it's probably even more startling that you never figured any of this out before today. Your doubts have only increased since the dragon f first pointed out that how Mary never told you about any of this. What in the world is she even doing? Is this yet another one of her attempts at shielding you from truths you have no reason to learn? Or did she, too, assume you were already aware of this nightmare you've apparently been living your whole life? Whatever the case, it appears as though the dragon is hardly finished with his explanation. To put it simply, most people wouldn't care about Pandora being as dominant as it is for the same reasons that allowed us to reach this position to begin with. Namely, because we're convenient. Convenient? Instead of answering, Jasper motions the plate before you, which you still haven't touched since it was first brought to her table. You should finish that meal now before your host starts thinking that you don't like the food. It's not very polite to leave scraps behind either way. Not very polite? Either this is the CEO's way of trying to exert power over you or he generally can't tell how invested, how unsettled you are by your conversation. As angry as you feel at this attempt at deraining you, you try your best to hide it behind a veil of insecurity that will probably be better received by the Drake than outright hostility. I don't think I'm hungry anymore. Perhaps, but for the sake of not causing a scene, I suggest you dispose of that food nonetheless. That and lower your voice to acceptable levels. A foul look from the Drake is more than enough for your fake fear to quickly turn real. You honestly hadn't realized you'd begun shouting in the midst of her rant just now. You began to pick apart your plate of whatever this is little by little. Astounded by the Drake's inhuman composure, his ability to recount things so nitidly in spite of how nightmarish they sound is quite horrifying indeed. You're slowly losing your mind hearing him speak, and his serious gaze remains the same as ever. It's actually almost as frightening as his explanation itself. Nonetheless, the food still tastes like nothing. Oh, for the love of it, it tastes perfectly fine, I assure you. This is fine dining of the highest caliber, and all guests of this establishment agree to this fact. If you can't handle the food you're eating, the most likely explanation is that there's something wrong with your taste buds. That sounds kind of like gaslighting, not gonna lie. Jasper raises an eyebrow in disbelief at your witty remark, half-spoken in jest. You're not sure whether it's because he thinks you said something very smart or very stupid. As funny as it is to see him in this state, you decide to nudge him forward, eager to see what more the dragon wishes to share with you. So, convenience. Care to explain what you mean by that one of these days? Well, it's a little bit of everything, really. Lots of small things that add up in their whole. Like how you can watch every show you can think of on a video screen through a single account of Netflix. I'm sure that's far more manage manageable than making dozens of accounts on different service providers, correct? 
sadly, Jasper, in in my world, in our world, that's pretty much what's happening. Or how you can have goods from all over the world delivered right by your doorstep within a matter of hours instead of having to wait weeks or months. And of course, I don't need to mention things like smartphones or the internet even existing, do I? That's like, way too many things at once. Is this yet another of your we-do-everything non-arguments? Oh please, those were only three exam examples. I could make a thousand more. My point is, most people enjoy when things are easy, approachable, comfortable. And our job is to provide all these things and so much more. We give our customers all over the world exactly what they want, when and where they want it. And we don't give them reasons to stress about the details. That's why we became as influential as we did. That's why nobody minds that in the slightest. Hell smart. So he says, and yet you find yourself minding an awful lot. Everything that comes out of his lips sounds like pure ma madness, and yet he speaks with the same tone of a teacher going through an average lesson at school. It's rather freaky, actually. Nonetheless, the more this goes on, the more things start to make sense. If Pandora truly does own everything, it would explain how Mary and Jasper could wreak havoc on her apartment complex the other day as nonchalantly as they did. Celine Inc. is nothing more than another front for their activities. Of course, being as rich and powerful as he claims would easily allow them to rack up the funding for the synthetic project now, and the Kronos project way back when. Even the FBI's interest in their affairs becomes a lot more understandable with all this new information. You're not sure whether to feel intrigued or repelled by the Drake's words of this moment, but with all the evidence that surrounds you, you'd be hard-pressed not to believe them nonetheless. I guess it's just kind of hard to wrap my head around everything you've said. It's not every day that you find out, well, all this. Indeed. Frankly, I thought you'd have far less trouble internalizing all this than you actually did. Then again, I did also wrongly assume you'd already been made aware of most of it. Nonetheless, you can rest assured that Pandora is every bit as influential as I claimed it is. We even used to be the world government um, but up until not that long ago. Y you were? That's not all that hard to believe, considering everything you've heard so far. So it's like cyberpunk, except a company won against every company. Don't act so surprised. I'm sure you've already wondered how come we were allowed to reach this level of influence to begin with by now. Well, that is true. I was meaning to inquire about that at some point. After all, shouldn't there be an antitrust laws to protect against this kind of power consolidation? I'm in this video right here. I'm a little bit tired, everybody. Hopefully you like this video. It's a little bit shorter. The shorter the videos are, the more not, you know, physically able I am for recording that day. So yeah, thank you for watching. You know, I'll be seeing you in the next episode or some other game, maybe? Who knows? Or maybe another top 10. Hmm? Mm -hmm. See ya, good luck on whatever you're doing, bye!